In this series of videos, we'll be helping you to understand how to operate the AV equipment that you'll come across during your teaching in one of the many lecture theatres across campus. And we hope that these guides will help you to feel more confident when setting up each type of space for your specific teaching and learning activities. This video focuses on lecture theatres where the audiovisual control panel is built into the display for the desktop PC. For example, in the lecture theatre located on the ground floor of the Stephen Langton building, which is where we are now. When you enter the room, you should find that the PC has been shut down by the previous user of the room. A Lincoln logo will display on the control screen, and you can touch anywhere to start. If you find that the system is still powered on when you enter the room, you'll see a preview of the desktop and a range of buttons to control different devices. Please remember that we highly recommend you shut down the system at the end of your teaching session using the power button in the top left hand corner. So let's explore the touchscreen control panel and the tools available to you. The lights button, when pressed, will present you with the following scene options. These are configured on a room by room basis, but in this setup type, you're likely to find off, which will black out the room, scene one, which will provide a low level full room cover, Scene 2, which will light the audience at a low level with no light on the lectern, and Full, which is of course all lights in the room turned on. The lectern microphone is the default for the room, and it should always be active. However, before you begin teaching, you should ensure that a green light is shown at the base of the mic stand. If this is not the case, simply press the grey button just below the light. The microphone button on the control panel will allow you to adjust the sensitivity of the additional handheld and lapel microphones, which can be found in a docking station on the lectern, and we will look at these a little later in the video. On the right side of the control panel, you'll find the volume controls for the computer's audio output. You will use this if, for example, your PowerPoint contains a video, in order to ensure the output level is right for your students in the room. There is also a mute button, which you can toggle on and off as required. The camera control button, as with the lights, provides you with four helpful presets to choose from, and the camera will move into position shortly after you select your desired setup. There are also more manual controls for adjusting the camera's position. You can pan and zoom as required, and this is the camera that will be captured in a Panopto recording if you include camera capture as part of your session settings. The Inputs menu allows us to select which device is displayed on the projection screen and switch between them throughout your session, as is necessary in your teaching. The PC option will display the standard university desktop computer onto the projection screen. This should be selected when you want to log into the computer and, for example, show a PowerPoint or other teaching content that you're accessing through the Windows desktop. We will look at logging into the PC in just a moment. The HDMI button will allow you to connect an external device using the spider dongle supplied on the lectern. You'll notice that the dongle contains a range of connectors and depending on the device you want to use, you can select the relevant connector. We can use, for example, standard display port, mini display port, HDMI and USB-C. It's important to remember that regardless of which connector piece your device uses, you will still select HDMI on the control panel. The room features a dedicated cable for devices that require a VGA connection, and you'll need to select VGA on the control panel if this is the input you're using. When I activate the visualizer, you will see the light turn on, and any content will automatically be displayed onto the projection screen. You can use the visualizer to show a range of objects to your students, including physical items, or writing on and annotating printed documents. You can control the visualizer setup, for example, by zooming in and out, adjusting the focus, or turning off the light if it's not required. This is all done through the control panel. You do not actually need to use the controls on the visualizer itself. The room is equipped with a Blu-ray player. You'll usually find this located below the PC monitor in the computer stack. This can be used to play Blu-ray and ordinary DVDs, as well as CD discs. When the option is selected, the output will change and display to the projector, and this can be controlled entirely from the PC. There's no need for a remote or to use the buttons on the device itself. You will see on the screen the usual options for ejecting and closing the disc tray and controls to, for example, play, pause and stop. The image mute button will allow you to temporarily hide what is being projected, 
for example, whilst you log into the university desktop or switch between applications. Simply press the button once to blank the screen and again to return to your desktop or other input. As previously mentioned, the lectern microphone should already be turned on, but you can use the controls located on the left-hand side of the screen, as with the additional microphones, to adjust the volume output and mute temporarily if required. And lastly, the power button allows us to turn off the system ready for the next person who is using the lecture theatre. Please ensure that you do this before leaving the room. At the top of the computer screen, you will see a smaller window, which displays a thumbnail of the university desktop. Simply press this once to open it into full screen mode. You can return to the room controls at any point by pressing the button in the top left hand corner. You can now log into the PC as usual, entering your university username and password. Whilst using the PC, at any time, you can make use of some helpful annotation and highlighting tools. The type of tool can be selected from the bottom of the screen and adjusted to suit your needs, for example, by changing the pen style and color. These tools can be used to annotate anything shown on the screen, for example, websites, videos, and your documents. You can click clear annotation in the bottom right-hand corner to erase any annotations. Please note that these annotations are not recorded by Panopto or saved at any point during the session. Therefore, you should use, for example, the annotation features in Microsoft PowerPoint if you'd like these to be captured in a Panopto recording. We have now covered all of the available settings for this type of lecture room and control panel. Now, we're going to further explore the microphones available in this space. The lectern microphone will be active by default. This is the main microphone for the room and you should remain in the lectern area when it is being used for a recording. If you would like to move around the room and away from the lectern, consider using the lapel or handheld microphone. In the charging dock, you'll find these additional microphones. To turn on a handheld microphone, remove it from the docking station, push up and hold the white power switch until you see the screen light up. You'll need to press the pair button when it displays a green light, this is confirmation that the microphone has paired successfully. You can now walk around the lecture theatre as required. Afterwards, ensure that you turn off the microphone by pushing and holding the power button and return it to its charging dock to ensure it's charged for the next user. For the lapel mics, remove one from the docking station, press and hold the red power button until the screen lights up. You will see confirmation on the screen if it has linked successfully. In some theatres, you'll find that the lectern desk height can be adjusted. If this is the case, you'll be able to locate the controls on the underside of the desk. You can lower or raise the lectern as required, though please return it to a suitable height after the session. At the end of the session, ensure all microphones have been returned to the docking station and that you've powered off the AV system by pressing the power button on the room controls. You'll need to select the green tick to confirm. That concludes our video for this room type and style of lecture theatre. We hope that you found this guide to be useful. Please remember that if you have a technical problem immediately before you start teaching, you should call the ICT service desk directly using the phone provided in the lecture theatre. Alternatively, to report a problem ahead of time, you can email the service desk at ict at lincoln.ac.uk, stating the room location and the nature of the problem. For further information, as well as teaching and learning resources, please visit the address displayed on screen. Thank you.